तुम एक सर्व जगत ईश्वर बंध मुख्य तम तम अर्चंती कुशला प्रपनार्ती हरं गुरु तुम्हें का सर्व जगत ईश्वर बंध मुख्य हो तुम तम अर्चंती कुशला हा प्रपनार्ती हरं गुरु ट्रांसलेशन बाय श्रील प्रभुपाद ओ लॉर्ड यू आर द काउंस ऑफ बंडेज एंड लिबरेशन ऑफ द एंटायर यूनिवर्स बिकॉज़ यू आर इट्स रूलर those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness surrender unto you and therefore you are the cause of mitigating their distresses and you are also the cause of their liberation we therefore worship your lordship Let me repeat translation oh lord Oh, you are the cause of bondage and liberation. You are the cause of bondage and liberation of the entire universe. The entire universe. Because you are its ruler. Because you are its ruler. Those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness. Those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness. Surrender unto you. Surrender unto you. And therefore you are the cause. Therefore you are the cause of mitigating their distresses. and you are also the cause of their liberation and you are also the cause of their liberation we therefore worship your lordship we therefore worship your lordship purport by sri prabhupada actually lord vishnu maintains and accomplishes all good fortune if one has to take shelter of lord vishnu why should the demigods take shelter of lord shiva they did so because lord vishnu acts through lord shiva in the creation of material world lord shiva acts on behalf of lord vishnu when the lord says in bhagavad gita 14th chapter that he is the father of all living entities am bija pradapita this refers to actions performed by lord vishnu through lord shiva lord vishnu is always unattached to material activities and when material activities are to be performed lord vishnu performs them through lord shiva lord shiva is therefore received on the level of lord vishnu when lord vishnu is untouched by the external energy he is lord vishnu but when he is in touch with the external energy he appears in his feature as lord shiva this is Srimad Bhagavatam, 8th Canto, Chapter 7, Text 22. In this chapter, the Lord Shiva saves the universe. This has been said. So these are this Prajapati's prayer offers prayers to Lord Shiva. Hmm. This is uh, the topic when Lord Shiva drinks the poison. all ocean ocean of poison so destructive poison mm. thereby lord shiva saves the universe when the both demigods and the demons both of them were churning that ocean milk ocean mm. so many good things came out mm. all demigods all of them they took all these things at last when this uh, poison came up because basuki snake was the rope oh here that basuki snake vomited poison such poison very very vast ocean like poison came up but all were afraid to take a poison who will take poison Will you take poison? <laughs> All are very anxious to take of nectar. <laughs> nectar will come up and will take. And who will take poison? It's very destructive. All are afraid. Nobody was prepared to take it up. And if that poison would be there, the whole universe would have been destroyed. Such a condition, you see. But Lord Shiva came up. All right. 
If nobody wants to take up poison, give it to me. Give it to me. You see, Lord Shiva is such a personality. Lord Shiva is such a personality. He accepts all the rejected stuff, all lies. Nobody accept. All will reject. No, 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 no. But Lord Shiva says, "Hey, all right, get it. Give it to me." <laughs> It's such a personality, Lord Shiva. Do you understand? His asutosa. Very silly, and within a very short time, he is pleased. He is very much pleased. Yesterday in the evening, I was telling you that story, how that Brahmin in Kashi perceived Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva was pleased within very short time. You just offer a bell leaf and little Ganges water. Om Namah Shivaya. Yes, then Lord Shiva will appear. What do you want? He will immediately give a benediction. Is Ashutosh is uh, placed in the very short time. You can't understand. Do you understand? Huh? He is a new bhakta. <laughs> yeah. He is sort of here attentively. Do you understand? Yes. Bhagavatam Krishna katha is none different from Krishna. It's Krishna himself. One should pay attention, concentrated attention. Yes. This is nectar, but Lord Shiva is saving you, is taking poison and giving you nectar. He is not giving poison to you. He takes himself poison, and you are all anxious. Have the nectar, isn't it? Have you tasted nectar? Uh, unfortunate fellow, I have not tasted nectar. Such an unfortunate fellow. <laughs> oh ho! <laughs> is the nectar? Is it? Is a uh, Is here, is a, is given to you, but you can't have it and taste it. Do you know how to taste this nectar? You don't know. You see, you know how to taste a food. How do you taste it? By what sense you taste taste it? Huh? By tongue. But this nectar cannot be tasted by tongue. You should mind it. You should know it. Do you know how to taste it? Huh? What he says? Oh, you know it. <laughs> Then how can you taste it? Yes, wants to drink this nectar through years. Yes, through years. Sruti gatang. Sruti means year. Ah. If you can drink this nectar through your ears, that means paying concentrated attention, hear it very carefully. Then all your body, all your consciousness, your heart will be purified, will be purified of all material contaminations. Then you will be able to see the Lord. You understand? Then you will be able to see the Lord. श्रुते खी तो पथंग श्रुते खी तो पथंग श्रुता एंड इखी तो इफ यू कैन हियर देन यू कैन सी इखी तो मीन सी स्टॉर्ड आई वॉज टेलिंग यू सच बिग बिग पर्सनैलिटीज लीडर्स हियर इन दिस मेटेरियल वर्ल्ड दे से इज देर गॉड इज देर लॉर्ड हज एनी बॉड इज सीन हिम I am such a great leader. I have not seen. Has anybody seen it? They say because they can't see. I was telling how the great demon, Tirunya Kasipu, couldn't see. Whereas his son, seven-year-old son, Lord Maharaj could see. Do you understand? Why? Why Tirunya Kasipu couldn't see, and 
एंड वाई एंड हाउ प्रहलाद कुर्सी हाउ वट इज वो क्या आंसर प्रहलाद महाराज अब हार दिस भागवतम यार सो ही कुर्सी श्रुते की तथम इफ यू कैन हियर दिस श्रीमद भागवतम कृष्ण कथा फ्रॉम ए बोना फाइव पर्सनैलिटी अथॉरिटी देन यू विल बी एबल टू सी द लॉर्ड हु विल नेवर हार वाज नेवर हार ही कैन नॉट सी ही कैन नॉट सी दिस इज द प्रोसेस दिस इज द प्रोसेस and lord shiva is very very merciful also very very merciful and very magnanimous dar is very magnanimous he always accepts all the rejected stuff all rejected stuff nobody will accept that thing and that why he saves lord shiva has no place you see he lives uh, in a crematorium ground you see small son he is almost naked almost naked eh? and he has put on the snakes also in his body snake garland snake in hand snake in this uh, hip all snakes you understand he has smeared the ashes throughout the body throughout the body he has smeared the ashes He is a mad person. He is also a mad person. He dances always. He dances. Do you understand? He dances and he also sings or dances. And he has a bull. His carrier bull is there. Mm. He has a trident with him. Trishul trident. Trident. Do you understand? Yeah, such a personality. externally one may see if one may see lord shiva he will not appreciate him was such a ugly person is almost naked with snakes ha huh? with the matted hair is wearing ashes not good looking person is not good looking person ha huh? the like mad man but is so merciful person and such magnanimous heart he is and very very powerful personality also then otherwise how can one devour all such ocean like poison if you can take only a drop of that poison you will die but he didn't die he didn't die and no harm also took place in him no harm yes so such power is such a powerful personality darbar he saves the whole universe do you understand only little little drops some that is that fell down on the ground little drops of poison the scorpions the snakes they took it so they have become very poisonous the scorpions and snakes were little trap while shiva ji was drinking that poison some little drops fell down and the scorpions and snakes they took it so they have become so poisonous now if a snake will bite he will die you understand it is very poisonous how lord shiva could digest all these things he has such wonderful power here one question is here the prajapatis um, are offering prayers to lord shiva o oh lord you are the cause of bondage and liberation of the entire universe because you are its ruler those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness surrender unto you and therefore you are the cause of mitigating their distresses and you are also the cause of their liberation we therefore worship your lordship and my revered spiritual master sri lokpal in his purport explained it actually lord vishnu maintains and accomplishes all good fortune if one has to take shelter of lord vishnu 
Why should the demigods take shelter of the Lord? Why should he take shelter of demigods like Lord? No need at all. In Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has said, no, no need at all to take shelter of a demigod. Janne, huh? what is that? Uh, no. One, if someone avoiding or disregarding Lord Vishnu or Krishna takes shelter of a demigod or some demigods, he is an unintelligent person. Unintelligent. He has no intelligence at all. Krishna says that thing in the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? He has no intelligence at all. He is very... Because the demigods are subordinate to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna or Vishnu. Hari Steka Tattam Vidhisiva Suresa Pranamitam. Lord Hari is the Supreme Truth. Neither Lord Shiva nor Brahma nor Indra. They are all subordinate. Lord Vishnu or Krishna. Vidhisiva Suresa Pranamitam. Lord Shiva is worshipped by Lord. Brahma, by Lord Shiva and Lord Indra also, all demigods. Ekali Ishwara Krishna also Vrutya. Krishna is the only Ishwara, only supreme controller, Vibhu, supreme Lord. All others are his servitors. Then this question arises here. Why should? Why should one uh, demigod like Shiva takes shelter. Why? What necessity? No necessity at all. But here in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said the Prajapatis of her prayer to Lord Shiva that you are the cause of bondage and liberation of the entire universe because you are its ruler. You are the cause of mitigating the distresses of those persons who surrender unto you. You are also the cause of their liberation. We therefore receive your worship. If also it is said, Jatha Tarur Mula Nishachalena Trupanti Tatskanda Vujabhushagha Prana Paharat Tathindriyani Tathiva Sarvarano Matyuti Jya If you will water, if you put water at the root of a tree, then whole tree with its branches, its twigs, its fruits, and leaves will get water. No separate water. If you give food to the stomach, then whole body will be nourished. No necessity of giving food to the eye or ear or nose or hand or leg. Similarly, Tadharanam Achyutejya. If you only worship Lord Vishnu Achyuta, or Lord Narayana or Krishna, automatically all are worshipped, all the demigods are worshipped, no necessity at all to worship the demigods. You understand? No necessity. Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna is the supreme Lord, all powerful, he is unlimited, he is ananta, he has unlimited potency. Whereas, these demigods have limited potency. Demigods have limited potency. They will give you some limited result, limited benediction. They cannot give you unlimited benediction. No. Because they have limited power. Limited power. So, why shall one worship demigod like Sir Shiva. And why the Prajapati say so? This is most important thing. This is very confusing. This is very confusing. Srimad Bhagavatam says, only worship Krishna, only worship Lord Vishnu. Then automatically all the demigods will worship, all will worship, if Krishna will be satisfied 
and Vishnu will be satisfied, automatically all will be satisfied. All will be satisfied. As I say, as Srimad Bhagavatam says, if you give food to the stomach, then automatically all the limbs of the body will be satisfied and nourished. No separate giving. Then why this question arises? This is the most important question. Therefore we have this thing. I was telling that thing last evening. It's not easy thing. It's not easy thing to understand this thing. It's a very, very difficult thing. So Krishna says in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Janma karma cha me divyam evam jobeti tattva taha. Ekta adeham punar janma naeti sa mangeti arjuna. This is most important. Jobeti tattva taha. Krishna says, my appearance or birth and activities, leelas, are all transcendental. It is not material. And if someone knows in it in tattva, jobeti tattva taha, knows in tattva, then that life will be his last life here in this material world. After this life, when this body will be finished, then he will go to me. There is no doubt in it. Do you understand? This most important job is he taught, taught, taught. One should understand it in tattva. We have two considerations. Two considerations. Do you know what are two considerations? You? What's your name? Huh? Grant. Grant. What say? Grants, grants, back to grants. Yes, uh, new bhakta also. Acha, 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 acha. Let there be some stamp. I can, I can recognize it. It's a new bhakta. You president make a stamp? It's a new bhakta. <laughs> I am in confusion. <laughs> All right, you bhakta. Ram. All right, whatever. It's a new bhakta. That's all right. There are two considerations. Do you know those two considerations? You don't know new one. You know? Uh, you are not new, I think. You are old. <laughs> uh, you don't know. Yes. It's not expected that all should know uh, everything. Yes, that's all right. You know, Parameshwar? Huh? You are rascal. <laughs> achha, achha. There are two considerations. One is apat vichar, another is tattu vichar. In English we say apparent consideration and tattu vichar, absolute consideration. Do you understand? Now you understand it. You new bhakta, all the new bhaktas, you should understand. We have two considerations. Abad vichar, tattva vichar. Apparent consideration and absolute consideration. Do you understand? And our case, our consideration is tattva vichar, not apparent. Not apparent. No. It's tattva vichar. Jo veti tattva taha, Krishna says. Tattvata. One should understand Krishna in Tattvata. In Tattva. One should understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Because it is not different from Krishna. Krishna Tulya Bhagavata. First I said you. So it should be understood in Tattva. Tadamang Tattvata Gyantva Visati Tadanantaram. Eh. Krishna says this thing in Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita. Tadamang tattata gyantva visate tadanantaram. You want to go to the kingdom of Krishna? You want? Yes. How can you go? I came here to Australia. First I have to be granted visa. <laughs> yeah. And first I will obtain a passport. Then I will apply for visa. 
the Australian High Commissioner grant it, then uh, one will be able to enter into Australia. Otherwise, no, refuse. Ah! So, your passport and visa granted. No, get out! How do you say? Get out! <laughs> or, if you enter, then you will be punished. Do you understand? No, Allah. They will not allow you. This is the case here in material world. And how can you enter into the spiritual world? What passport do you have? What visa you have been granted? Huh? How can you enter? Do you know? What passport is required? What visa? Is there any high commission will grant you visa to enter into the spiritual world? Do you know it? Huh? You don't know. You don't know. This is passport and visa. Jo beti tato taha. Tato to gyanta visote tadanantaram. If someone can understand me in tato, in absolute consideration, that is visa granted. Then he will be able to enter into my kingdom. Otherwise, no. Get out here. Do you understand? So this is tato vichar. This is absolute consideration, no apparent consideration. This is very, very subtle tattva is here. Very subtle tattva. Let me give you one example. What is tattva vichar? I think most of you cannot understand it. Most of you cannot understand it. Can you understand? What is tattva vichar? You economic student, you cannot understand. Do you understand? No. That's I say. That I say. It's not an easy thing. So let me give you one example. Say, the Krishna, its activity of Krishna is a very wonderful activity, transcendental, not material activities. I'll tell you one story from Sri Mahabharata. Do you know Yudhishthira Maharaj, the eldest brother of five Pandavas? Eh? There were five Pandavas. Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul, Sade. Yudhishthir is the eldest brother. Huh? Famous one. So when that uh, Pandavas were banished, they are living in the forest. Do you understand? With their wife Draupadi. They are living there. And once Draupadi felt very thirsty. She needed water. Mm. Please give me some water. I'm very thirsty. So near, in the near distance, there is a very good tank with very clear water. Mm. So one by one, all the brothers, uh, Nakul went, Sahadev went, uh, and uh, this Bhim went or June went to get water. But they couldn't get water. There was a dharma baka there. Oh, he was asking some questions. He said, if first answer my question, then you can get the water. Otherwise you cannot get water. If you take, you'll all die. They, all, they are all dead. They couldn't answer the question what the dharma baka puts. At last Yudhishthir went there. You understand? At last Yudhishthir went there. So Dharma Bhaka said, you see, all your brothers are lying dead there. They couldn't answer my question. If you can answer my question, then you can be able to take the water, otherwise not. Then Yudhishthira Maharaj said, all right, what is your question? Dharma Bhaka asked him four questions, four questions. Kimasarjam kahasuki khapanthaha kasavartika. This is Sri Mahabharata. You understand? It's four questions. What is wonderful here in this material world? This first question. Kashukhi, who is happy here? The second question. Kapantha, what is the way? Third question. Fourth, Kasavartika, what is the message here? These are four questions. Do you understand? Economic student, 
Huh? These four questions were asked by Dharma Baka. I am not going to tell you the all answers. I have only given one answer. Kho shukhi hi. Who is happy here? You understand? It's one of the questions, one of the four questions. Kho shukhi! Who is happy here? And Yudhishthira Maharaj gave answer, very nice answer. Panchami ahani sastheva sakam pachati so gruhe. Androni apravasi cha so bari cha ramodate. This answer Yudhishthira Maharaj gave. You can't understand what he says. You understand? Let me tell you. Who is Sukhi? He says, Pancha me ahani sastheva sakam pachati so gruhe. That person, one who works very hard, whole day he works, eh? retiring from work, he comes to his home at the last part of the day and cooks some sak, sak leafy vegetable. Do you understand? You are cooking sak here also, eh? leafy vegetable. He cooks some sak. Eh? And just eats it. You understand? It's Sukhi, he says. Then another thing he says, Anruni was never incurred any debt. You understand? Anruni. He just maintains himself by his own meager income. He never incurs any debt. It's Anruni. Then Third thing it says, Apravasi. That means, who doesn't live in a foreign country, who lives in his own country. Own house, village house. Do you understand? So Bari He is happy. Do you understand? He is happy. You understand the economic student? Huh? Can you understand what Mr. Mara said? Apparently, uh, yes, yes, yes. Apparently, you understood as if, but it has a very deep meaning, very deep meaning, very deep meaning. I will raise a question. Yudhishthira Maharaj says, who has never incurred any debt, who lives in his own country, own house, village, not not, doesn't live in a foreign country and toils hard and, and just cooks sock and eats, he is very happy. But Yudhishthira Maharaj has not said, or okay, all right, if some person has all these things, but if he is a diseased person, he has some disease, will he be happy? Will he be happy? Huh? No. Will you be happy? What do you say, new bhakta? Huh? If you'll be a diseased person, is some scholic pain, some difficulty in the stomach, like Jagatpati. Oh! <laughs> so? <laughs> How will one will be happy, you see? Just Maharaj didn't say or okay. He has never said this thing. It will be free from disease, no disease at all. Then he will be happy. He has never said. So I think this Maharaj's answer is not complete. Do you think is it complete? It's complete. Yeah. Because you cannot understand it in tattva. Therefore I said, you understand it in apparent. You have apparent consideration. You don't know what is tattva vichar here. But Yudhishmasa answer is quite complete. It's not incomplete at all. It's not incomplete at all. How is it complete? He has not said or okay. There's no disease. This is what? what to, how to understand in tattva? Therefore, I say we have these two considerations. Apparent consideration and absolute consideration. Tattva vichar. 
is apparently all understand it apparently nobody very very few persons very those who know the thought they can understand otherwise not possible you understand let me say who is anruni here is there anybody anruni is there anybody was not incurred any debt have you incurred any debt huh no you are telling lie you have incurred debt nobody is there who is anruni here you will never find one body here who has not incurred debt all are all have in, incurred debts you know what is that debt you know it what is that debt ha huh? karma what karma <laughs> you know sans what karma you are indebted to your father and mother pitru runa isn't it your father and mother gave you birth ha huh? do understand they take care of you you grow up they maintain you isn't it ha huh? so are you not indebted to them have you no duty no obligation to them how will you pay back the debt how can you pay back the debt ha huh? no then you are indebted you are indebted you have incurred debt how to say that i have not incurred any debt ha huh? all are all have in debt in cut debt they are pitru runa devaruna rusiruna bhutaruna you are indebted to your parents for fathers you are indebted to demigods you see lord shiva says you taking poison isn't it are you not indebted to him ha huh? then you are indebted to demigods devruna pitruna devruna rusiruna the sages the saints do you understand you are indebted to them isn't it devruna pitru rusiruna bhutaruna you are indebted to the other animals also isn't it cow gives you milk the bull plows land isn't it ha huh? so many animals are you not indebted to them ha huh? then how do pay back the debt how can you pay back the debt you are all indebted we are all indebted do you understand but how can we pay back this question this is the question do you know any means how can you pay back have you any means no once krishna has also said is krishna indebted to anybody ha huh? is krishna indebted ha huh? yes to whom to devotees how is it how is it how of krishna is indebted to devotees ha huh? Once Krishna said, "It is in tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam." You understand? He told the gopis. He told the gopis, "Oh gopis, you have developed so intense and pure love towards me that you are running to me at midnight, leaving aside your husbands, your family, your children. At dead of night." You are running to me to the jungle of Brindavan. Developed so much intense and pure love towards me, I have no wealth to pay it back. I am indebted to you. Do you understand what I say, new bhakta? You can't understand. I think <laughs> is new bhakta. 
You understood? Huh? What's your name? Huh? He's also new bhakta. <laughs> He's also new bhakta. <laughs> All right, all right. You see, Krishna says this thing. He is indebted to the gopis. He is all powerful. He is completely full. Who has all wealth with him? Lakshmi, Sata, Sasra, Samrama, Sebhyamana. Thousands and thousands of Lakshmis are serving him. And he says, I have no wealth to pay back your debt. I have no wealth. How it is? Do you understand? This is very difficult. This is what I said to understand in tattva. Is tattva vichar, not apparent. This is how to pay back your love towards me. No material wealth is required for it. That wealth I am lacking, Krishna says. Do you understand? Therefore, he came as Gauranga Mahaprabhu to pay back that debt. Do you understand me? He became indebted when he is Krishna. Krishna is never indebted to anybody, you see. All we are indebted to him. How Krishna will be indebted to us? No, no, no. But Krishna says to gopis, I am indebted to you because I have no wealth to pay back your this love. So he came as Gauranga Mahaprabhu to pay back that love. Do you understand? And the gopis, headed by Radharani, do you understand? Feeling the pangs of separation from Krishna. And crying and crying and crying. Oh, Krishna, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? You understand? They're crying. They're wandering in the forest of Vrindavan, asking every creature or every tree, every animal, Have you seen Krishna? Have you seen Krishna? Oh, tree, oh, creeper, oh, bird, oh, deer. You see? You see? Gauranga Mahaprabhu. The creatures are there. Deers are there. Cows are there. Peacock is there. And Mahaprabhu is feeling that pangs of separation is see there. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? They are crying and wondering. Similarly, Mahaprabhu was crying. Was crying for Krishna. Though he is Krishna himself. He is crying for Krishna. Gauranga bolite hobe puloko sarir. Do you know this? Gauranga bolite hobe puloko sarir. If you utter the name of Gauranga, your whole body will be filled with pleasure and all the hairs on the body will be erected. Do you understand? New bhakta. Huh? Have you ever felt such sensation? No, no. If just what utter the name of Gauranga, your whole body will be so cheerful, will feel so pleasure. Oh, the all the hairs on the body will be erected. Why? Why? Why such thing takes place? Do you know? You know? Why? Love. Hari Hari Bolita Noyonu Boye Niro. You should know this thing. Gauranga Bolita Hobe Puloko Sori. Hari Hari Bolita Noyonu Boye Niro. That's the answer given there. Do you know this song? This famous song? Is Vaishnava Mahajan's song? You consult your song book. You'll find there. Huh? Gauranga Balite Hove Pulaka Sariro. Hori Hori Balite Noyanu Vahe Niro. 
He is Lord Hari himself. But uttering Hari, he said, Steer Hari, oh, Hari. You see. He is himself Hari, isn't it? But uttering the name of Hari, he said, Steer. Hari, Hari, Bali, Tena, Yanu, Bahe, Nira. This is the reason. How Hari himself is crying. <laughs> that means Gauranga Paul. Feeling the pangs of separation from Krishna. Kaha Krishna Nanda Kula Chandrama. Huh? When he sees Lord Gauranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees Surup Dandar Goswami, Raya Ramananda. Do you know? Surup Dandar Goswami and Raya Ramananda. They were Lalita Sakhi and Bisaka Sakhi in Krishna Lila. In Gauranga's Lila, they were Surabdanda Goswami and Raya Ramananda. As Radharani was crying, saying Lalita Sakhi and Bisaka Sakhi, asking, Who is that Krishna? The son of Nanda Maharaj. Kaha gale? Kaha paun? Huh? Sri Nanda Nanda no? You see, where shall I go? Where shall I find him? That son of Nanda Maharaj, can anybody help me in finding him? You understand? Rasrimati Radharani was crying. Similarly, Mahaprabhu was crying. When saying Raya Ramananda and Surup Dandar Goswami, because they were Sakis. Oh, Nanda Kula Chandama. Oh, Mandra Murali Rava. Oh, Mahan Surendra Mani Dham, like that. You see. Where is that son of Nanda Maharaj? Where is that Krishna who plays flute in such a sweet tone? Mandra Murali Rava. Do you understand? This Mahaprabhu was uttering this and crying and shedding tears. Hari Hari Valite Nayanu Bahenira. The Lord Hari himself and shedding tears by uttering the name of Hari. Thereby, he is paying back the debts. Do you understand? Thereby, Krishna is paying back the debts. Krishna has become indebted. You say you are not indebted? You have not incurred any debt? Runa, we are all indebted. We have indebted to our poor fathers, to our parents, to our poor fathers, to demigods, to sadhu saints, rishis, to other animals. How can we? Pay back. Have you any means? No. Only one means is there. You cannot pay back with anything else. Devarsi bhutapta nuram pitrunam ba na kinkara nayam runicharajan sarvatmane jo saranam saranyam gata mukundam parihurta kartan. Srimad Bhagavatam says, this is the how can one pay back that? Sarbatmanejo saranam saranyam gata mukundam parihut. If someone can completely surrender into that Lord Krishna, Lord Mukunda, you understand? Then he pays back all the debts, all the debts, all the debts to your forefather, debts to demigods, debts to rishis, saints, debts to other animals. Oh, you understand? Finished, no debt. Then you become indebted. Otherwise, you are not indebted. Do you understand? And just Maharaj said the same thing, Baba. Same thing. This is Tattva Vichar. This is Tattva Vichar. It's not a parent consideration, it's absolute consideration. That means when he is a pure devotee, has completely surrendered to Lord Mukunda. Krishna or Hari, he is on Runi. Do you understand? Whole day he toils. 
हार फल सर भी सब कृष्णा होल दे होल दे टेल्स हार गेट्स आउट गेट्स आउट हर दिस सर भी सब कृष्णा डू अंडरस्टैंड कमिंग बैक इन द इवनिंग ओनली टेकिंग लिटिल साक प्रसाद इज हैप्पी डू अंडरस्टैंड एंड अप्रवासी यू सी अप्रवासी he is not in a foreign land he is in his own home you understand all are in foreign land i have come to a foreign land apparently uh, he has come to a foreign land apparently uh, he has come to a foreign land are you australian ah huh? <laughs> oh then you are in your own land <laughs> yaar is suki api <laughs> we are all foreigners here baba we are all foreigners our home land is what is that my guru maharaj says go back home you see isn't it my guru maharaj emphatically says go back home then stay ghar ko chalo Go back home. Where is home? I am in home. You nonsense. You are in home. You are a foreigner here. <laughs> you are not in home. <laughs> Your home is there. Your father is there. Is a large kingdom, isn't it? Large kingdom. That is said here. Aham bija prada pita. Here, Sila Prabhupada quoted from Sri Mad Bhad Gita. Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, ah, uh, that He is the Father of all living entities. I am the Father of Pita. I am the Sir Giving Father. His Father, Your Father's home is there. You are here. Are you not in a foreign land? Huh? Yes, you are in. We are all foreigners here. All Pravasi here. Nobody of Pravasi. How can one be happy? You understand? What Jyotish Mara says, one who is in king's kingdom with his father, his father's home, you understand? He is not indebted to anybody. He has not incurred any debt. He tells her for the service of his father, Lord Krishna, whole day, and is very much satisfied with a little sack at the end of the day, and he is in. His father's house. He is happy. He is happy. You understand? He is. There is no disease there. Is that disease? Janma, mrityu, jara, vyadhi, birth, death, old age, and disease are here in this material world. All are disease persons, isn't it? Are you not disease person? Huh? Yes. All are disease. Ask one by one. All are disease. I am a disease person. You understand? One who is there, there is no death, birth, or death and disease. So why shall Justice Mara said arogya? No need of saying. Do you understand? No need of saying. So he is happy. This is tattva vicha. Do you understand me now? You can't understand it fully. I think still some lacking in you. Mm-hmm. So, just Maharaj gave a complete answer. Do you understand? His complete answer is complete. This is tattva vichar. It's not apparent, but apparently is defective. So, our vichar is tattva vichar. Our consciousness is tattva. So, this tattva is there. How is it? That question is raised here. Actually, Lord Vishnu maintains an accomplice all good fortune. If one has to take shelter of Lord Vishnu, there is no need of taking shelter of any demigod. But why it is said? Why it is said? The Prajapati said this thing to Lord Shiva. Shiva Prabhupada has explained it here. Lord Vishnu is always on a task to material activities, but when material activities are to be performed, Lord Vishnu performs them through Lord Shiva. True Lord Shiva. 
Lord Shiva is therefore worshipped and the level of Lord Vishnu. When Lord Vishnu is an attached to external energy, he is Lord Vishnu. When he is in touch with external energy, appears in the feature of Lord Shiva. That Brahma Sangeeta says. That Brahma Sangeeta says about Lord Shiva. Kira Jatha, Dadhivikara Vishesha Jogar. Sanjayate Nahitata Prathagasti Heto. Dasambhu. Samupeta Karjat. Govindam Adi Purusam Tamaham Vachan. That Brahma Sangeeta says it. The same thing. Lord Shiva is non-different from Vishnu. Example, milk and jogrut. Example is given milk and jogrut. Kira jatha dadi vikara vijesa jogat. You understand? Jogrut is formed out of milk. If you just put some acid, then stand to it, sour thing, and lemon also, huh? lemon juice, the jagrut is prepared. So jagrut is not different from milk. Similarly, Lord Shiva is not different from Lord Vishnu, but jagrut can be turned into milk. No. No. Jogrut cannot be turned into milk, and Jogrut cannot be said as milk. No. Do you understand? Dugdha hoite nare. I just said. Dugdha hoite nare. It cannot be turned into milk. It cannot be said as milk. Dugdhantara vastu noe dugdha hoite nare. It's not different from milk, but it cannot be said milk, it cannot be turned into milk, because something is added to it. That is a seed. Do you understand? But milk, there is no addition at all. Similarly, this is the difference between Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. That is stated here by Srila Prabhupada. This is the difference between Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. Lord Vishnu is an attached to material energy or external energy. Not attached. Whereas Shiva is attached. Do you understand? Whereas Shiva is attached to external energy. Lord Vishnu is not attached. This is the difference between Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. And Shiva is very, Lord Shiva is very, very powerful personality. Very, very powerful personality. Is more powerful than Lord Brahma also. Is more powerful than Brahma. Therefore, Lord Shiva is worshipped. Lord Shiva is worshipped. Lord Shiva gives all material things, material opulence, material name, fame, prestige, everything Lord Shiva gives. <coughs> everything he gives. Yesterday evening I told you, of that poor Brahmin worshipped Lord Shiva at Kasi, eh? her wealth, and Lord Shiva gave benediction. Go to Sanatana Goswami, he has wealth, he'll give you. Therefore, he got that wonderful touchstone. It's very wonderful. If you can touch a piece of iron, that touchstone, that piece of iron will be turned into gold. But by the association of Sri Sanatana Goswami, he got something extraordinarily, very, very, uh, that wealth, uh, valuable wealth, that is Nam Prem. We could kick off that wonderful dust. By the mercy of Lord Shiva, that Brahmin could get it. This is the mercy of Lord Shiva. Do you understand? This is the mercy of Lord Shiva. Vaishnamananga tha sambhu. Sambhu. Lord Shiva is also a Vaishnav. I was telling Lord Shiva was is dancing like a madman. Do you understand? 
and singing also. That's known as Tandava Nurtya. Nirantara Kahe Siva Mui Krishna Das. What he says? All he says, I am a servant of Krishna. Nirantara Kahe Siva Mui Krishna Das. I am a servant of Krishna. He's just singing this thing and dancing. And so ecstatic in that bhav is so powerful that he is able to drink the whole ocean like poison. Whole ocean like poison. Thereby he is so powerful. Do you understand? If someone will be as powerful as Lord Siva, then he can also drink. But nobody is prepared to drink. Why shall we drink a poison? We must have nectar. We don't want poison. You understand? But Lord Siva is so magnanimous. He always accepts all the rejected stuff. He is known as Bhutanatho. All the ghosts are with him. Bhutanatha. He lives in a crematorium ground. No house at all. No living place at all. Eh? All the animals are with him. All the ghosts are with him. Nobody wants. Hmm? All the demons, all the jakshas, all the rakshasas, they are all with Krishna, with this uh, Siva. Nobody wants to take them. They are all rejected. Lord Shiva says, all right, come to me, come to me, come to me. I'll give you shelter. So they are all there. Because he accepts all rejected stuff. All rejected stuff. This Lord Shiva is so merciful, so magnanimous, very, very powerful. Even more powerful than Lord Brahma. He said, Sambhu, Rudra, is born out of Brahma, but is more powerful than Brahma. Srila Rupa Goswami, hmm, as mentioned in Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu, there are 64 qualities in Lord Krishna. Do you understand? 64 qualities. Out of 64 qualities, some 50 qualities in minute form are in every living entity. You understand? But uh, in Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Indra, like demigods, they possess 55 qualities. Possess 55 qualities. Five qualities more than ordinary living entity. Do you understand? The 50 qualities, those are in very minute form, quantity, in every living entity, those qualities are in some greater degree. They are in Lord Siva, Lord Brahma, Lord Indra, etc. And more five qualities are there. Do you understand? The demigods, they possess 55 qualities. All other Vishnu Tattvas, Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayana, Nrsinga, Vamana, you understand? Many. Vishnu Tattvas are there. Krishna is the only avatari, sarvansi, sarvata, sarvavatari. Krishna is the source of all incarnation. He is Bhagavan. And all Vishnu Tattvas, they possess 60 qualities. 60 qualities. 55 plus 5. 60 qualities. But Lord Krishna has 64 qualities. So Krishna is the Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is the Bhagavan. These four qualities, there are four Madhuryas. Rupa Madhuri, Lila Madhuri, Venu Madhuri, Rati Madhuri. These four Madhuryas are only with Krishna, not with any incarnation. Therefore Krishna is Bhagavan. So, demigods, they possess 55 qualities. Brahma possesses 55 qualities. Lord Shiva also possesses 55 qualities. But, 
the qualities in Shiva is something more than with Brahma. Than with Brahma. The same five parts. Something more. More in degree. Not in something more in number. Do you understand me? It's more in degree. And Lord Shiva has more controlling capacity than Lord Brahma. Lord Shiva has more controlling capacity than Brahma. Therefore, Lord Shiva is worshipped. Vaishnavas also worship Lord Shiva because he is a Vaishnava. Vaishnava Ananda Thasambhu. Gopis in Vrindavan worship Gopeshwar. Lord Shiva. You can find that Gopeshwar temple in Vrindavan. Lord Shiva temple is there. It's known as Gopeshwar. Jaya Jaya Gopeshwar Vrindavan Amazho. That's in song you'll find. Jaya Jaya Gopeshwar Vrindavan Amazho. Lord Gopeshwar, Lord Shiva, be glorified. He's in Vrindavan. And gopis are also worshipping that Shiva. Why? Why? The Shiva is such a very powerful Vaishnav, merciful Vaishnav. If we can get his mercy, then can, we can have Krishna, our husband. Krishna, our husband. They are worshipping Lord Shiva and asking for this benediction, O oh Lord Shiva, please shower your benediction upon us. Let us have our beloved Krishna. And so, by the mercy of Lord Shiva, they get. So, Vaishnavas, also worship Lord Shiva, and we have this only prayer. Oh Lord Shiva, bestow your mercy and benediction upon us, that will develop Krishna Bhakti. We'll get Krishna. This is only purpose of worshipping Lord Shiva. Don't worship Lord Shiva like demons to get material wealth, name, fame, and prestige. No. The demons worship Lord Shiva also. To get material wealth, name, fame, prestige, and Lord Shiva awards them. Yes, awards them. Lord Shiva also awards them. And sometimes he is put into trouble also. By awarding such the benediction to the demons, Lord Shiva is also put into trouble. When Brukasura was there, who worshipped Lord Shiva? Asutosa, very quickly, immediately, satisfied, huh? and asked, All right, what do you want? Brukasura said, Please give me such benediction. If I toss the head of some person, he will be burnt to ashes, finished. Give me this benediction. The Lord Shiva, you see, immediately granted. Ah, oh, tathastu, 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 versus, let that, you get it, immediately granted, you understand? So that demon wanted to test it, it's a Shiva, looked like a madman, what he says, is it true? He couldn't have belief in it, he didn't believe, so demons are really uh, such people, such type of People, they never believe. Mm, you understand? So, so, he wanted to test it. So, he ran after Shiva to put his hand on the head of Shiva and finish him. He ran after Shiva. Shiva ji was put into trouble. Shiva ji was running, but what Shiva said, that must come true. It's not false. This must come true. Shiva ji was running and the demon was changing him, you see. So Shiva Ji at last went to Lord Narayana for protection. And Lord Narayana could understand how Shiva Ji was in trouble by giving benediction to a demon. <laughs> so Lord Narayana came out as a brahmachari, young brahmachari, and asked that demon, Oh, why are you running? Why are you running after Shiva Ji? Oh, he has given me this benediction. I want to test it, to put my hand on his head. Oh, you nonsense rascal. 
Why are you running after Lord Shiva? So long way, breathlessly running. <laughs> like that. Such a rascal. Foolish person. A Lord Shiva, you see a madman, mad person. Uh, do you believe in the words of a mad person? Why running? Why don't you put your hand on your own head and test it? <laughs> made a trick. <laughs> so that demon put his own hand on his head, finished. <laughs> <laughs> so Lord Shiva is now saved. The so Lord Shiva is such a personality. He didn't think of why this demon is asking for this benediction. He didn't think of. And why he asked such benediction? He didn't think of. Because he is in such ecstasy. In bhav, Krishna bhav. In such ecstasy. ecstasy. And the demons are there. He has allowed the demons to stay with him, so they are always disturbing. So Lord Shiva wants to dispose of them very quickly, very quickly. Do you understand? Very quickly he wants. All right, what do you want? And this, all right, all right, get, go, get out, get out. So, this is Lord Shiva. Very quickly he wants to dispose of them. <laughs> he cannot think of what he asks and what will be its uh, result. You see, it's such is Lord Shiva, such magnanimous heart. If we can get the mercy of Lord Shiva, then we can develop Krishna Bhakti. Hmm. Many things are. The Shiva Tattva is, I'm getting late. I'll finish soon. Shiva Tattva is something, special Tattva. It's special Tattva. It's not Jiva Tattva at all. No, not Jiva Tattva. The Siva Tattva is some special Tattva, Swadantra Tattva. You understand? And in many places in scripture, in Vedic scripture, you'll find the name of Demigods. You understand? In the name of Vishnu, you'll find the name of Demigods also. Same name, Siva, this uh, Brahma, uh, and uh, Indra, like all these names you'll find in the name of Vishnu. So there is confusion. What is this? Name of Vishnu? Is that Shiva's name is there? Brahma's name is there? Indra's name is there? Is name of Vishnu? And the demigod name? There's some confusion. Why is it so? It's very confusing. Therefore I said, it should be understood in Tattva, not apparently. There is no apparent consideration, it's tattva vichar, absolute consideration. What is that? The acharyas have answered this question. Because, as my beloved spiritual master says in his purport, Aham bija pravapita, I am the seed giving father. His father expands himself. Isn't it? The son is an expansion of father. Do you understand me? So, he has given his own names to the demigods. His own names. Do you understand? So, this is Tattva. Otherwise, one will be confused. Thank you very much.